Hey, hey guys, today we're going to be talking about Necron Tesla guns. No, no we're not, no we're not, no we're not, no we're not. We don't talk about that rubbish on this channel. This is for orcs. Oh, seriously? Hey, hey guys, Six Plus Steve-O here with another video for you. And in today's video, I am going to be showing you loads of awesome conversions, kit bashes, possibly some scratch builds in there as well, of some Orc vehicles. Um, at least they are Orc vehicles now, because the one thing that these all have in common is that they didn't start out as Orc vehicles. Yes, we are going into looted wagon territory. Um, now, none of these conversions and scratch builds or anything are mine. These come from the awesome gits over at the 40k Orc community. And for those of you that don't know, 40k Orc community is our Orc Facebook group that myself, um, Skarner, Dread, um, and some others besides uh, we run. And uh, it's a great community um, where people are sharing their creations all the time, whether that be their paint jobs, their conversions, their builds, their army lists, um, tactical advice, their videos, drawings, songs, uh, tattoos, whatever. Um, basically, it's a, a really cool gathering of like-minded girls and gits that just love all things green, and uh, we share anything orky on there. And uh, it's a great place for inspiration and help and advice. And it's just an awesome, awesome community. And uh, a little while ago, I put a post up there um, asking for community members to share their warlord creations. Now, that could be war bosses, big mechs, weird boys, or pretty much anything in the HQ section. And uh, I wanted to see their kit bashes, conversions, scratch builds, whatever, and uh, for a chance to be featured in a video. Um, I did that. It was a very successful video. Um, I think it inspired a lot of people out there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a fantastically successful video, a really fun video to make as well. It's great to share the community's creations and really sort of let the community get involved with the channel and let some of their work be shown off on the channel. And uh, it was such a success. Um, actually, I will pop a link in one of them corners. So um, if you haven't seen that video yet, go and check it out because, oh my God, some of the, um, the talent on display is just astounding. Um, and you, yeah, if you haven't seen it already, please, please go and check that one out. But like I say, it was such a success. Um, I thought, well, I'm not going to stop here. Let's carry this on and uh, do something else with it. So I put another post out um, quite a while back on the community Facebook group um, asking people for their looted wagons, their looted vehicle creations. And um, yeah, people um, were very quick to respond with pictures and stuff and uh, just an even bigger um, influx of pictures than I had for the last one um, so much so that I, I just haven't been able to share them all on this video because there's just so many it would be the video would be several hours long otherwise which some people might not say you know might say is not a bad thing um, also some people that um, sent pictures in they sent several of several different creations they'd done so I tried to as much as possible just pick one per person um, to show off on the channel. Now, the rules were for this. Um, now, a lot of the rules, there's some, some people sort of uh, break the rules, bend the rules slightly, but um, I may have let a few slip through just because they were so cool. I'm like, I've got to show that off, even though it's not quite what the brief was. Basically, it was a vehicle, could be a could be a looted wagon, could be a truck, could be a buggy, could be a battle wagon, it could be a gorknot, anything. Um, all, the only rule was that it had to start life as a non-orc vehicle. Now that could be from another faction, it could be from a, another miniatures range completely, it could have started life as a, a toy car or a Mr. Potato Head or anything. Um, so yeah, um, but without further ado, let's just get straight into it, shall we? And uh, take a look at one of our first entries here. So let me just uh, switch to the camera so you can get off my ugly mug and start seeing some beautiful creations. So we will switch to the camera there. Let's just get in here and expand this. Now, this first one that's got sent through, we're starting things off. Um, we're setting the bar high here to start with. But uh, this is a, um, a battle wagon. 
but it clearly started life as a land raider and um it's it's beautiful um absolutely stunning work this i absolutely love it um yes there's there's quite a bit of work done in it i particularly love the chains going over all the barrels and stuff he's you know put use some like small bits of jewelry chain or um old sort of little bits of chain from i don't know hardware stores or something that's a really cool use of those uh, i love the turrets i absolutely love the turrets um now the one at the front i i think that's a, that's he's created that turret out of various bits i recognize various parts from that the one at the top i'm not so sure about whether that's from like a third party or again whether that's sort of a scratch built or converted um, it's got plenty of fuel on there, loads of jerry cans on the go. Um, I love the work with the scoop. This is the Vindicator scoop, um, which he's added bits of sprue and bits of like um, girders onto it to just really throw in all the spikes and stuff. And yeah, this is just awesome. Lots of rivets and panels and bits on there. And he's just really orchified this up in the best way possible. Um, yeah, it looks looks beautiful, and uh, when they're sprayed like this and undercoated, it, it makes it even harder to sort of see where various bits have come from. Um, but yeah, this was from Matthew Thornton, this one, and uh, yeah, like I said, he has set the bar high. Matthew Thornton, that is a stunning battle wagon, my friend. So let's go on to the next one. This one, this one has been sent in from Jim Whitehead, um, and this is a buggy. I would say, um, and yeah, I'm not sure what this has been converted from. Um, it looks like, uh, well, it's a toy Jeep, isn't it? And uh, yeah, he's, uh, I'm trying to figure out what scale this is as well, actually. Um, oh no, hang on, there's a giveaway here, because I can see the um, one of the knobs uh, backpacks here with the, um, the shooter and the stabber in there, so uh, yeah, and I, I recognise some bits like this glyph here. The orc skull. Okay, so this is 40k scale. I wondered for a moment whether this was like a close-up shot of um, like a like a uh, Hot Wheels or something that you'd converted, um, like a Gaslands thing. But uh, no, it is 40k scale. Uh, very cool. I love the uh, sort of the the funnel in the, um, the the petrol can and everything at the back. Yeah, the rust effects on it are great as well. And uh, yeah, very very cool. Um, lots of little bodged up repair jobs and things and. Uh, yeah, very nice. I'm looking at these rivets as well, and they, they almost look like he's actually hammered real nails into that. Um, I don't know if that's true, Jim. If you can convert, confirm in the comments section if that's in fact what you did. Um, used a lot of wiring and piping and stuff to great effect there as well. Very cool. Nice work there, Jim. I love the very mad maxi, rundown, rugged look of that. That is very nice indeed. Oh, next up, we've got a good one here. Um, now, that's got some serious dacker on it. Yet, we have a looted basilisk. Is this? Yes, I think that is what it's called. I'm not totally clued up with Imperial stuff. Um, but, yes, um, nice little uh, looting job there. The orcs are going to love a big gun like that. And, uh, yeah, you can see he's, he's applied a lot of battle damage to it, weathered it, and worn it down. This thing looks like it's been through its paces. Um, I, don't, I don't think the orcs have done a whole lot to this, other than steal it. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's probably because it's got such a good gun on it. They're, they're, they're happy with that, as is. Um, I think he's replaced the barrel on here. Um, yeah, it looks like he's replaced the barrel. That looks like a bit of piping, like he's put a, a larger one on there. Um, but yeah, um, like the battle damage, very cool. Um, the orc, the orc at the top there, he's, he's missing an arm. I don't know if that's because that's um, he had to lose that arm to steal the tank, or whether that's just a, a work in progress. But uh, yeah, very cool. I think a basilisk goes great in an orc army. Actually, I think that the orcs would see something like that, and they would certainly want to loot it. Uh, that one was sent in by Casey Madden. Thank you, buddy. Uh, next on we have ah. Going for something a little different here. Now, you don't see a lot of these. This one's sent in from Sam Cross. And this one started life out as a Dark Elder Raider. Or a Drakari Raider, that's what they're called now, isn't it? Um, and, uh, yeah, he's put a um, big uh, boom gun or a, 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 a death cannon or something on the front there. Um, that looks very cool. Just uh, thrown on a bit of armor plating and stuff. It's got a very... Um, 
Jabba's sail barge, if anyone's seen Return of the Jedi. If not, why the hell not? Um, but yeah, it's got that sort of vibe about it. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. And uh, yeah, I, I, these these look very cool, actually. Um, it's good because you see a lot of Imperial vehicles being looted all the time. So it's nice to see some of the other Xenos um, vehicles being looted. Things like Elder and Dark Elder, Tau vehicles and stuff. Because um, you can get some very unique looking creations when they've they've stolen something that started life quite elegant um quite sort of nimble and elegant and subtle in its design and then completely thrown all that design philosophy out the window and just gone nah just bolt on some extra armor more jets more daca and yeah orcs are just no nonsense and uh you know what? I've I've got to agree with them. They enhance that. They've enhanced that vehicle. They've they've really made me want to rush out and buy a Dark Elder Raider now, just so I can do something similar to this. Yeah. So Sam, very cool creation there. Um, I absolutely love that. That's that's really cool. I'm wondering what you use that as um, with the cannon on there. I presume you're using that as a looted wagon. Um, but uh, yeah, these would be these would make great uh, Chinook like war copters and things. Actually, wouldn't they? Thinking about it. Hmm. So this is what I love about doing these type of videos and doing this sort of stuff. As you look at each thing, it it inspires you. I'm sure at, at home now watching this, you're feeling equally as inspired by these um, and just getting ideas um, that you can loot to, to do some looting. Uh, but let's move on to the next one. Ah, speaking of uh, Xenos looting, we have someone uh, that's looted from the Tau. This is Zachary Paul Stewart sent this one in. So this is a Tau devilfish. And uh, yeah, he's. Um, I presume this is being counted as a buggy. We've still got the burst cannon on there, which I presume will be like the twin-linked uh, big shooter. Got the driver in there, looks like he's having a whale of a time. We've added a scope and stuff on there. Um, he's got some a pack of all the gubbins on the back, little boss pole and stuff. So, yeah, fairly minor little conversions. Um, and I'd say they don't always have to be um, drastic. Um, you, and you, I think sometimes it's good to leave, you know, make it obvious what it originally was. Because the orcs, they don't necessarily want to like redesign the wheel. They just want to steal it, loot it make some repairs, make some modifications, improve it, customise it and that. And as battles go on and as they use it, they will keep tinkering with it and they will keep improving on it. So it's quite good that you can see what it originally was. And particularly sometimes like the old paint job is still left on there and, you know, things like that and the old markings because orcs, they're not going to be too fussed by that a lot of the time. Some more ostentatious orcs maybe like to sort of, you know, spray over it, cover it with their own paint and, you know, uh, make it their own truly but uh yeah this is this is cool and uh i suppose it could be a def copter actually couldn't it it probably is a def copter actually thinking about it not a buggy um but i, I again i see no reason why you probably couldn't use this as either um yeah these would make great def copters actually and since gw don't sell us a decent def copter kit now um doing things like this is probably uh is, is a very good option actually um, I don't think I don't think uh, piranhas are, are that expensive to buy either. But uh, let's move on to the next one. So this one has been sent in by Philip Frinis. Philip Frinis or Frinis. I'm going to say Frinis. Sorry if I'm butchering your name, buddy. Um, but uh, oh, this is a this is a lovely, lovely little looted wagon. This is the classic Lehman Russ looted wagon. And uh, it's just some very subtle little um, modifications and additions, but uh, I think they work beautifully. You've got the, uh, he's gone for, you can see he hasn't decided what weapons he likes. So he's gone, do you know what, zog it, I'll throw them all on. And uh, that's exactly what he's done. We've got a big shooter on one side, we've got rockets on the other, and we've got a custom mega blaster in the middle with a big kill cannon on top. Um, and a stick bomb for good measure. And, uh, yeah, this is awesome. Death Skulls. Death Skulls are the masters of looting. Um, they they really know how to loot and uh, clearly shown by this. I like the little addition of the, um, uh, I think that's a knob shoulder pad used on there just to throw some spikes, just to get it looking a bit more brutal. We've used a, a rocket uh, launcher sort of targeter slash guard on there, which is, that's a nice little addition. 
just some random armor plating and things probably patched up where it was damaged originally um yeah very cool very cool and uh again shows you you don't have to go too crazy just in the addition of i like this bit as well the um the death dread jaw plate that's a cool addition i like that so uh yeah that's that's really nice i like it nice paint job as well and i like all the sort of the dirt and the grime effects on there it looks very worn and uh mm, sometimes the subtle touches are better actually um yeah i like that a lot nice one philip oh look at this uh, Eric Brown sent this one in. Now, I know Eric Brown. He's a big uh, contributor to the 40K Orc community, and he is always tinkering and creating and building things out of all sorts of stuff, and this is no exception. I think what we have here is a Lehman Russ, but uh, there's not much of a Lehman Russ left on this. So, like This part here is Lehman Russ, right? That's So we've got that on either side by the look of it. He's then built, I presume, out of plastic art or something, a whole front section here. He's given it a real kind of truck look um, with the big scoop on there. It looks, again, like he's made that out of plastic art himself. It says, uh, use better run on it. I love that. I like the camo paint pattern. Camo stuff's cool. Um, I believe he is a Blood Axe player, actually, thinking about it. Um, now I... I'm remembering. Um, got the guy up there with binoculars. Um, I th I believe he said in the comments section of this picture that the turret is from a Sherman tank. It does have that kind of Sherman tank vibe about it. So there's all sorts going on on here. He's used a bit of GW kits, a bit of like um, different companies kits, and uh, some of his own creations as well, and just thrown it all together. You can see he's had right fun digging through his bits box and uh, just come up with this awesome brutal looking creation and uh yeah that looks quite big and imposing and uh very cool eric brown nice one buddy and i'm sure you're very proud of that okay something a little different now they're not all tanks we've got flyers as well um i'm gonna be honest with you straight up guys i have no idea what this thing's called i know what it is i know it's the the Actually, I don't even know what it is. I, th I believe this started out as a Space Marine flyer of some type. I think it's the small Space Marine flyer. But I could be wrong. That could possibly be um, Imperial Guard. But I think it's Space Marine. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, guys. But now it doesn't matter because it's Orky now. And uh, looks like he has created, I believe, a DACA jet. I don't know. Uh, no, he's got bombs on there. So he's got the the custom force on there. I don't know what one he's using this as is uh, as actually. There's certainly loads of DACA, which made me think DACA jet. But seeing the bombs, maybe it's a Blitzer bomber. Maybe or maybe he's probably done it like this so he can use it as any of them. You know, um, so he can say right for this game it's a um, Was bomb blaster jet, or for this game it's a Blitzer bomber, um, which is quite a cool way to do it. Give you gives you your options stuff. Or maybe it's possibly even magnetized. Maybe I don't know. Um, but yeah, very cool. We'll see, um, yes, lovely little conversion, this. Really nicely done. Looks so cool. Looks so walky. Look at them stubby little wings, look. Um, yeah, brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Nice work on the scenic base as well. He's gone to town on that, which is cool. Um, I think a lot of sometimes the flying bases people leave fairly plain and that, but he's, he's gone to town on that, and that, yeah. I like that, mate. I like that a lot. That was from Nick Tomlin. Um, now, I think Nick Tomlin sent in a, a lot of things, actually. I, I don't know if I've got any more of his, but you can see in the background there his looted uh, Bane Blade, which is now a, like a Kill Crusher tank or a Battle Fortress. And, uh, yeah, there's there's plenty of good stuff he sent through. But, uh, like I said, I had to try and... I didn't want one or two people sort of hogging the whole show. Um, so I tried to sort of get as many people on here as possible. So... Uh, but like I said, it was so cool that I had to show it, obviously. <laughs> so there you go. There's a closer look at that. Um, and you can see, so, yeah, oh, it's yeah, very, this is cool. Iron Orc, it says on there. So, yes, I, I love some of the clever use of parts here. Now, look at the main gun and look at the surround he's used on there. He has used 
and the armour plating from the mech guns turned on its side to make a housing for the main gun. I absolutely love that. I'm possibly going to have to steal that idea because that is just so cool. It just fits so nicely. Um, we've got the door from the mech gun there covering over some of the lights. It's now an exhaust. Um, we've put, he's got loads of bullet holes and battle damage on it, which is very cool. And he's, he's mixed up the colours, which I really like as well. So we've got a red turret here. We've got a yellow sort of bad moon one here. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so you can see that, that they've been modifying this as they go. They grab something off the scrap pile, off another tank and put it on there. And uh, yeah, this is cool. We've got a uh, custom mega blasters. We've got a custom force field. We've got big shooters bristling over this thing. We've got a kill cannon. No, no, not a kill cannon. A zap gun up there. Mm. Oh, I've got to get me a uh, Bane Blade to loot. They're just... Uh, they're there's so many cool things you can do with them. What a cool centerpiece to your army. Nick Tomlin, two awesome creations there, buddy. Thank you very much for sending those in. This one's a personal favourite. Um, again, fairly subtle, but there's just some really clever use of stuff here that I absolutely love. And I, again, I think I'm going to have to loot some of these ideas because there is just some genuinely really cool stuff going on here. Um, I love this. I love this use of the battle wagon scoop where he's trimmed it down to fit in the front plate there. That's made a just a really... I love that. I've never seen anyone do it quite like that before. Um, I love this. Again, really simple. Just a, a Death Dread jaw plate laid over the top of the guns. But I just think it, it just... It just adds to the shape of it and everything. Uh, the door missing here, the doors at the side. I love it. I, I just absolutely love it. Again, it's fairly simple. Um, there's just been a few bit of chopping and cutting and adding bits on, but it really, really, really does enhance it. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a really tidy job, this. This one was sent in by Dennis Callison. And uh, buddy, um, yeah, I'm impressed. I like it and I will be looting some of these ideas. So yeah, what did this start as? This was clearly a um, predator. Um, and uh, now that name is much more apt because this thing looks looks like a hunter. This the yeah, this mm, very nice, top stuff, buddy. Top stuff. What have we got next? We have this one from Thomas Burgios, and uh, yeah, this is um, <laughs> this is a combination. They've got some classic old parts going on here. So we have. The front end is the original orc truck um, going on there with the scoop on there and everything. At the back, we've got an old school rhino. Um, I love the rust effects. It looks really weathered and like knackered and just, uh, yeah, that is lovely rust work there. Really nice. Um, and then we've, <laughs> they've obviously done this in a hurry because they have just piled anything on there. And uh, thrown it all together. Made We've even got rats running around on it, mate. This thing is crawling. Um, we've got a harpoon on there, which is a nice little touch. Um, I imagine this counts as like a grabbing claw or something like that, which is very cool, actually. I like that. That's a good idea. Stick a harpoon on your vehicles to latch onto the enemy. Um, it's got some... Is this is this is Elder, isn't it? This is Eldari or something with those on there. It makes me think this part was from a... A wave serpent or something so yeah all sorts going on there thank you thomas ah the optimus prime truck look at this um yeah um i don't know what this started as um i don't know what he's made it out of but i love it it's really cool it's really cool it's clearly a truck the scale and everything looks truck size. It's got a very similar sort of footprint and shape and everything to the truck, but it is, it's clearly like a one-off design, and uh, I love the mesh on the windows. The paint scheme is cool. The whole Optimus Prime look is very cool. The weathering's great. Um, I love the automated turret with the wires and stuff in it. It's very enclosed cab. It looks a bit more safe and a bit more sturdy than your regular truck. Um, yeah, just really nice. This kind of represents everything an orc truck would be. You can almost hear this thing belching out the smoke and the engine revving. And uh, yeah, it's 
stunning work, stunning work. This was sent in from Matt Cragg. Um, Matt, mm, beautiful, mate. Thank you very much for sending this in. You must be so pleased with this. Uh, I bet that gets a lot of attention wherever you take it and put that out on the table because, uh, yeah, that is very, very cool indeed, my friend. Uh, next up, we have one here. This is, um, yeah, <laughs> where do I begin with this? This was sent in by Paul Bradley, and uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Um, I presume it's, it's a Battle Fortress or a Battle Wagon. I, I presume Battle Fortress. Um, I, I'm assuming Freebooter, and uh, he's gone with a pirate theme, and he really, really has gone with a pirate theme. So it started life as... Um, this is from Age of Sigma, and I believe it's got something to do with like the undead or something. I'm not that clued up with Age of Sigma, um, but I, I love this this at the front where he's changed the uh, the sort of the the, the statue, the um, the like the mascot, I guess you would call it, of the ship, and put the orc on there. And that is genius, man. That is genius. That is just so tidy, and a beautiful plastic card work um, where he's put panels and stuff over it and. It's just so bizarre and random and unique and just zany as hell. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> what can you say about this, man? But that is going to turn heads, isn't it? I look forward to seeing what this thing looks like painted and that because it's, it's going to be a stunning centrepiece to an army. Um, it's thrown on, like, the, the wrecking ball and everything. I don't know where these tank tracks come from. They look like from, like, a third-party kit. Um, but yeah, this is virtually scratch build, and he's just mounted this on. But some serious work's gone into this. This is not an easy build. This is some, you know, some, you know, this is good, high talent, skill level work going on here. And I am incredibly impressed, as I'm sure you guys watching are. Um, wow. Yes, very nice work there, Paul. Thank you, buddy. Next up, one from Peter Walsh, and uh, he sent in his um, Death Dread, which was looted from an, what they called Armager Knight. And uh, yeah, very cool. I had a couple of these Armager Knights myself um, in the Forgebane set, and I sold them and almost instantly regretted not keeping at least one of them to convert into like a, a Mega Dread or a Mecha Dread or something. And uh, now having seen someone else doing just that with it um i regret it even more because this looks awesome um so he's got the the big shooters and the close combat weapons here which look badass and looks very cool he's added on like power claw bits on the feet just to make them look a bit better because obviously the armages are a little bit weedy so he's bulked it out he's put uh shoulder guards and bits on there and just added some glyphs and a nice little jaw plate and yeah just made it look orky and uh very very cool i like that awesome awesome work next up what we got next oh 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 just give me a moment please to just take this in um another idea i have to loot i, I i've got to loot this so this is a uh, mechanicus dune crawler i believe these are called and when i first saw these i couldn't help but notice the striking resemblance to killer cans and uh, he's clearly seen the same thing and uh, taken that on board and just uh, thrown some stuff. Oh, this, this looks so, so good, man. This is just stunning. Um, I just can't stop looking at this. So he's converted it into a um, a mech gun, I believe. Custom mega cannon Um mech gun and uh yeah very cool we've got the grot in there but it's it's got a bit of mobility because it's got the legs so this thing can walk around pl plonk itself down and acts as an artillery piece and it just looks so cool it looks like it was meant to be orky all the time and uh oh i like it i like it a lot and it's given me ideas of getting one of these and doing something with it i don't know if um i've already got all the mech guns i want i've already converted and scratch built my mech guns but um I would like to turn one of these into like either a Mecha Dread or I, something. I don't know, but something because it just, it's got that killer can look to it, hasn't it? Beautiful, beautiful conversion. I think um, I said about one earlier, this may be my favourite one actually. So far, I think this might be my favourite one. 
Um, this isn't a competition. So it's not about you picking favourites, but that that's just that's done something to me. That one that is stunning. Um, it's an, it's Nick Tomlin again. Oh, he's snuck in. Nick, you are a seriously talented guy, mate. Um, I didn't actually realise that was yours when I put it in there, um, but it had to go in there because it's it's beautiful. Okay, next up, who have we got here? We've got Lorn Campbell, and it's a two-for-one here, where we've got two battle wagons. Um, we have one which um, was started life as a land raider, and uh, it, it doesn't really resemble one anymore. Um, I love it. He's got it. Has he got it going? Yeah, he's got it sort of going reverse, flipped it round, and I always think they look quite cool like that. It gives them a very World War One sort of vibe to it. Um, this one, I'm not sure. I don't think this was, or parts of it at least, aren't GW. Um, but it's awesome. It's stunning. Um, you can clearly see what they both are and what they represent. They both look brutal. And, uh, yeah, that one's got a very kind of um, almost World War One or kind of um, alternative, uh, like uh, weird world war kind of look to it, like an alternative future if the war had carried on, you know. It's got that kind of um, very steampunky look to it, with loads of rivets and all the, 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 the um, uh, exhaust pipes and stuff coming out. It's just very cool. Crawling with grots all over it, repairing and... Yeah. yeah. Awesome work there, buddy. Awesome work, Lorne. Yeah, two... Beautiful stuff. I love the Bad Moon logo on there as well, but uh, I would, wouldn't I? Of course I would. Next up is this uh, Goliath uh, Rock Grinder, I think they're called. Is that what they're called? This is um, started life as a Gene Steeler cult vehicle. Um, but uh, yeah, the orcs don't go in for all that sort of uh, stealthy, sneaky, underhand shenanigans. We just uh, rob it, loot it, and then blow stuff up with it. And uh, yeah, this is very cool. And these. I think these make great orc vehicles. There's something about them. They've got a very industrial look to them that suits the orcs very well. He's added some serious dacker on this thing. That is a gun from the Tau. I recognise that one. That is from the big... I can't remember what it's called, guys. I don't really do the um, the the, um, uh, the space blueberries, the Tau. Um uh, Riptide, is it? Maybe gun from the Riptide or something. I want to say that. I might be wrong. Uh, we've got an old school shooter there. Um, yeah, lots of. Uh, I don't know what this bit's from. But we've got some old school components. We've got a, a real mix of stuff going on there. But yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. And I think he's. Um, yeah, he's widened it, hasn't he? This thing's not as wide as this usually. I, I'm. Tr it looks like he's cut it in half down the middle, expanded it outwards, added this bit in, and expanded it. It's got a lot more girth to it now. Uh, so he's got a good troop carrying capacity going on there. Um, but yeah, lovely work there. This is sent in from John Morgan. John, lovely work. Next up, another two for one. And we've got another cut and shut job going on here. And this one's sitting from Marcus Castellanos. And uh, Marcus, long time subscriber of the channel, long time member of the 40k Orc community, um, and an active member. And uh, yeah, he's created some awesome stuff here. Where do we go first? Let's go over here. So this is just, um, it looks like a refueling truck or something, but I, I highly doubt the Orcs are using it for something as sensible as that. Um, it looks like the picture's a little bit blurry, but it looks like there's guns on there. Like it's a, this is this is a flamer, isn't it? This is like a super scorcher. This is literally just a huge drum full of highly highly flammable combustible materials that's just going to jet out there, and it's just massively exposed. One bullet, and this thing is gone. But that is so orky. It's brilliant. I love it. And do you know what? I, I look at this thing, and I just think Robot Wars. Um, for any of you old enough and remember the program from back in the day, it's got something about it that just it looks like one of the contestants on Robot Wars. It's awesome. Um, over here, um, what do you do if one Lehman Rust is not enough? You get two and you bolt them together. And not long ways like most people would do, um, side by side and get a double wide wagon. Uh, so as long as he doesn't have to get fit for any narrow pathways or anything, roadways, he'll be all right. But uh, yeah, it's uh, double fronted, so double the guns, double the killing. 
awesome stuff. Um, very, um, very original thinking there. Um, again, really rusty paper, um, paperwork, rusty paintwork as well. These things have well worn and been well used and look very cool. And I think these cans are literally old cans of beans or something. Um, I wonder if they still got the beans inside them. But uh, yeah, Marcus, awesome, awesome stuff. Next up is this. Oh, this takes me right back to my childhood. Um, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, Dino Riders, um, which is something going way back to, to my era. Um, but it's not. It's, um, I believe, it's Zoids. Um, I think. I I think it's Zoids. Or is it? Possibly even Thundercats. No, I think it's Zoids. I'm not sure. This is definitely, though, something from my 80s slash very early 90s childhood um, toys here that's been converted into what I can only assume is a squiggoth, but a mechanical squiggoth. And, uh, yeah, it's sporting a lot of dacker. We've got rockets. We've got even cannonballs on the top there being ready to load into this brutal-looking thing. And... Uh, yeah, this is just a great use of of an old toy that um, is probably worth some money, um, or was worth some money anyway, as though, almost like a collectible nostalgia piece. Um, or, I'm totally wrong, and it's just some sort of cheap toy that's been bought from somewhere. Um, John Johnston sent this in. John, uh, list in the comments section, buddy, what, what this thing is and what it originally was before you looted the living hell out of it. But uh, yeah, that's very cool because, um, like, I, I, I presume this is a gargantuan squig off as well. It looks big enough to be because um, they're not exactly cheap to get. So this is quite a good way to get one a lot cheaper and build your own, and uh, quite a quite an ingenious way of doing that as well. Oh, look at this! Um, this one was sent in by the uh, 3D print master Kyle Reiki. Um Kyle, for those of you that don't know, um, he creates some of the most stunning orc vehicles and creations um, and has his own Patreon page where people can um, become members and download his stuff, his PDFs, and 3D print off some just truly, truly mind-boggling creations. Um, honestly, some of the work this guy does, just it, 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 it just blows me away um it's stunning and this this is an example of it now um i, I think he has he, he has done some looting here of various parts um which is unusual for him because most of his stuff is just 100 percent 3d printed um and this this might be actually i, I don't know it's it's hard to tell because it's painted up so well and it's worn and weathered and battle damaged and stuff it, it's it's hard to sort of see um I, I don't know. I, I recognise this door. Um, that looks like a door from a battle wagon. Um, there's bits, but again, I don't know. He could have 3D printed that door. He could have 3D printed all these various parts. Um, but yeah, this is this is a... Well, look, at it's just all engine. It's all engine and guns. You can't even see where the orcs like get in. Um, there's, there's just about windows slats there, so they've got really poor visibility, which I love. I love that, that they can... They haven't thought about like logically like the engine being in front of the windows is probably not great for your visibility but they don't care man they're having the time of their lives ragging this thing around um yeah that that is really cool really really cool indeed there's so many guns look one two three four cannons there big shooters over there big shooters here big shooters there big shooters there big shooter big shooter um just bristling with Dakka. And this, and who can forget this, just this just, just, just great fuck off cannon sticking out the front. Awesome stuff, Kyle, as always. Oh now this one. I love this. I love this. This one is set in by Autumn Roxanne. And she has created a really, really cool uh rhino looted conversion job thing. Uh I don't know what she uses this as, whether it's a truck or a looted wagon or I don't, I don't care what she uses it as. It's awesome. Um, look, I love... I want to first off go about the weathering and the stuff. Look, this really looks like cement and gravel and debris all over here. Like This has been clearing like mines and stuff. It's uh, lovely, lovely weathering. Tyres look really cool. Um, 
this has just got a really, really realistic vibe about it. The paintwork and everything, and it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's such good. You can see the front of this Rhino has been completely blown out, and then they've just bolted an engine onto it, bolted wheels, strapped a dozer blade on there to put protection on it, and uh, yeah, just made it open topped and this yeah this thing was completely wrecked completely wrecked left for dead but the orcs are like nope we're going to make good use of that we're going to we can patch that up we can work with it we can work with it and uh, boy have they done that um this is another contender for possibly my favorite amongst all these entries it's it's oh i don't know it's between this and the uh, june crawler um both very cool for very different reasons but yeah, this is stunning work. Thank you, Autumn, for sending that in. Absolutely lovely. Now, here's something a little different to loot. Um, what is it? It's a um, chaos thing, a forge fiend. That's it. That's what it's called, forge fiend. Or a mauler fiend. Mauler fiend, sorry. So I'm presuming this is being run as a squigoth, I would say. Seems like the natural conclusion to me to run it as or i suppose you could run it as some kind of like mega dread or death dread or something he's sporting twin big shooters on there um the knob on there's having a great time driving this thing whether he's like got wires like um into this thing and mind controlling it or something i don't know but they've they've only the orcs could loot a demonic engine like a semi biological semi-mechanical semi-warp driven beast from the very pits of hell itself um orcs go yeah i'll loot that i'll, I'll, I'll i can improve on that i can turn that into a, a tank or you know just <laughs> this is why orcs are so cool man they just don't give a shit they will have anything and it was superbly demonstrated here on this one this is another john johnston so uh the whole one per person thing hasn't really worked out has it um but uh yeah it, it, it had to go in because it's just such a crazy crazy mental idea that um had to be applauded got a um looted lehman russ again here um this was from james joseph dean and uh, yeah, nice little job here. So we've got the the normal uh, Lehman Russ. We have the um, this. I was gonna say this is the um, uh, battle wagon turret, but you know what? I don't think it is. He's this is a scratch build. Yeah, this is plastic card work, I think. Uh, but it's got a very similar look about it, and he's done a really nice job. Um, lovely big uh, kill cannon on there. Got another cannon there. We've got some uh, bolters there, I think. Or they, yeah, bolters on there, or shooters. The turret looks cool on the side. We've got a bit of patch up work going on here. Again, more plastic card work along the back, expanding the back bit. Yeah, this is this is nice work. Quite look at the tank tracks that's all plastic card work as well and each one has been intricately done with like the the teeth marks and yeah again this is when you first look at it you think oh it's a fairly simple um job no not too much has been done but actually you stop and you start taking it in you're like no 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 there's a there's a lot of work's gone in on this a lot of scratch building and the fact that you don't notice that straight away is what i really like about this that's the mark of a of a, a really good uh converter kit basher scratch builder in my opinion is that it doesn't jump out as you to you as immediately like oh that's that's homemade you know it looks like something you would buy from forge world or games workshop or one of the third parties it, it looks that good um so yeah james really nice work mate really really nice work that must have taken you quite a while cutting all those rivets and all those various uh, tank tracks um that is if you have done that i mean unless these are from a third party supplier or from another kit but to me they look like uh you've made them yourself um which is uh, must have taken some time ah look at this we've got uh, from johnny hanigraf um, this is a looted dreadnought which is now far improved and is now a death dread and uh, i love this i love the the head with the the sort of visor bit and the jaw that's very very cool 
Um, so he's, he's added some height to it there. We've got the exhaust. We've got Death Dread shoulder pads. He's given it proper weapons, not the weedy little weapons that the Space Marines give him. And he's managed to fit all four in. So we've got one, two, three. Um, we've, got, well, we've got a Dread Claw here, I suppose, and two Dread Saws. And then we've got a custom Mega Blaster. So he is sporting a bit of shooting and a whole lot of close combat. And, uh, yes, it's just uh, really nice work there. And again, he's left the original paint scheme on there, but then just laid over. So this started off as Imperial Fist, I presume. Um, and then it looks like Death Skulls have had their wicked way with it and bolted on all their bits. Lovely work. Lovely work. He's got around the fact that it's only got two arms by you know bolting on the gun with the arm and then bolting on like a shoulder-mounted uh, close combat arm there. Very cool. Nice one, Johnny. This is a lovely um, battle wagon, I would say, um, with um, the probably the super cannon is that he's put on there, which was so. This is trying to look at all the various parts here. So we've got some tau weaponry on here. It looks like a tau devil fish, I want to say, but it it could be something. I, it could be anything at this point. I do recognise this stuff. This is the galvanic servo hauler stuff, and this is a lovely use for these. So he's... I don't know how the kits for them come, whether they come like so I'd split down the centre or whether he's chopped them down the centre. But rather than build them, he's, he's cut them in half long ways and mounted each side to make tracks on there. Genius. Absolutely genius. Um, to the point where... you. you you can't really tell what this was, um, or at least without really taking a good look. And he's got something really cool, like this is just a death killer tractor, or like a <laughs> combine harvester or something. And look at all the trophies on the front. We've got skulls and heads and decapitated stuff from pretty much every faction going there. Awesome, awesome stuff. This is um, Francisco Viejo. Um, and uh, very original, buddy. Very original, and I, I love seeing ideas like this. It's things like this I look at. I'm like, I've got to loot that. I've got to loot that and steal that at some point. Do that myself because that's so cool. Uh, another basilisk, I believe. Um, but uh, this is cool. This is very um, World War One again. Very old school artillery looking, heavy duty industrial stuff. And looks very cool. Even the guy with the hammer there. He's uh or is that the handle that he's the lever that he's pulling down? I don't know if it's the lever of the thing that he's pulling down to fire it, or it's a hammer and he's just giving it a clout because like the shell's got jammed in there or something. Classic toolbox mech here, getting to work on the bits. Um very cool. Loads of rust, battle damage, really nicely done. I like that a lot. This is Trask Wilkinson, again another dedicated member of our forty K Orc community. And this is what I mean, guys. If you are not a member of the 40k Orc community on Facebook yet, why the hell not? Get yourselves over there because literally every day I click on it, this is the sort of stuff I'm seeing. I am inspired on a on a hourly basis by the awesome guys and gits on there. And uh, yeah, there's, there's so much creativity going on. The Orc community is by far the most creative, imaginative, and just fun community when it comes to imagination and creativity oh this is another good one nathan blewett sent this one in um first of all well done on the color mate you chose the right color um and i can see what he's done here um and at first i, I couldn't quite see what he's done but we have um <sighs> possibly four rhinos as the base here we've got certainly look you've got the rhino here you've got a rhino here and i am i think there's there's two side by side yeah this is this is four rhinos mashed together because i was wondering this i looked at it first of all, oh it's a rhino and then i see this bit this is clearly the, the bit from the the bane blade and i was like how the hell has he fit that on top of a rhino we've got something else cool going on in the background there look at that i want to see more of that whatever that is um but uh, yeah, he's he's just bolted uh, four rhinos together, top of a bane blade, um, big ass cannon, 
rockets, we've got gunners with rockets, we've got this ridiculously stupid looking awesome gun on the top. Um I love all this sort of details of the um the teeth around the barrels just to give it some more brutal edge. Probably really not good for um um, projectiles and things coming out there you're probably really playing it risky with that but damn it looks cool so go with it i love this bit at the front as well with the driver in there um yeah this is very original and uh i i don't think you're ever going to see two of these <laughs> you know if someone pulls that and puts that on the table you're like oh that's going to catch your attention nathan that is um yeah really clever thinking there and uh yeah just uh I've got four four tanks knocking about. What I'll do with them? I'll mash them all together and make one big fuck off tank. I don't really get much orkier than that. Got another. Uh, what's this one being looted from? This is a. Hmm. I. Not sure. Again, this could be a, almost a complete scratch build here. I, I, they're a bit so... Yeah, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know. I think this is a scratch build. It's, it's bits of Rhino? Possibly. No, it's not Rhino. I think this is scratch built, and it's uh, very nicely done. It almost, I, think, I think this is, looking at it, I think virtually this whole thing is made from plastic card. Um, and it looks very cool. It's it's really cool. So uh, I don't know if this was looted from something, maybe a third party kit. I do not know. Um, but again, lovely. Look at the little grot riding on the gun there. Oh, he's trying to fix, <laughs> fix, tighten up some rivets at the last minute. Um, you might want to hold on there, buddy, because that gun will be booming in a minute, and you're going to have quite a headache. Um, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. Who sent this in? Chris James. Chris James. Yeah, uh, mention in the comments, Chris. How did you make this? What did you do? Is this, is this, is this plastic card? Is is it looted? Is there a, an original GW kit underneath all this somewhere? Um, if not, then it's really nice work you've done there, buddy. It's very cool. Ah, this one. Ian Waz Wyatt um, has a channel of his own. Um, and creates some of the most stunning work from Plasticard. Um, what Carl Rieke does in 3D printing, um, Waz does in Plasticard building. Um, the guy can you give him a few, give him a few sheets of Plasticard, and he comes back at you with something like this. Um, but he has done a bit of loot in here, so he's used um, this is Land Speeder. Not a typhoon, is it a typhoon? It's one of the lad speeder variants, the one that has all the scouts sitting in the back. But he's gone um, commandos here. We've got commandos, you know, literally. I love the action pose as well. Like he's literally jumping down onto there, ready to jump out. I love all the little bricks and stuff on the scenic base as well. But yeah, look at the booster on this thing. This thing's going to go fast. Um, yeah, it's very cool. Really, really cool. I wonder what this would be used as. I guess um, probably a Chinook Warcopter, I would say. I suppose you could use it as a truck. So it's like a hovering truck. Um, but yeah, that's that's very cool. Again, look at the rivets and the bolting and stuff. Um, Waz, man, oh, if I could, I hope to one day be able to create, create things half as good as you can do. Because um, it's just really impressive stuff there. Lovely paintwork as well. Really nice, really nice indeed. Uh, another truck here. Um, this one's got uh, again. This is a third party kit, I think, or it's been built from like a toy truck. We can see some bits from the, uh, or at least I was going to say they're from the truck doors, but it looks like they've been built to look similar. Um, yeah, we've got a. You've lost your claw there. You've lost your claw off the end, or, or lost your wrecking ball. Alex Fishpool has created this thing, and uh, yeah, it's just the picture's a bit blurry, so it's quite hard to tell um, what bits. But again, I think this has been. I think this is work with a, a toy truck of some sort, or at least a model kit of a truck um, with loads of bits bolted on, loads of battle damage, loads of like dags and teeth and glyphs and things on it. Um, 
this clock. I recognise this. Just not sure where from. Is is that the part from the uh, Mech Workshop? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, he's even put in like little uh, scythes on the wheels and things. So yeah, this is a lot of scratch building going on here. A lot of work's gone into this. Thank you, Alex. Two for one again here. Uh, two more looted wagons, one Rhino, one Lehman Russ, sent in by Sebastian Salvanish. And, uh, yeah, um, which one do I like best? I like the yellow one best, would you ever have guessed? Uh, so we got these turrets are great. The battle wagon turrets are great. You take the turret and stick it on a, in, you know, on a Imperial vehicle and boom, voila, instant looted vehicle. Um, and they just work. I think they. I love the sort of little boxy nature of the when you put them on a big turret like this, and you put it on a small tank. I, I think it just gives it a really cool look. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that a lot. Um, there's loads of extra stuff going on here. We've got chains, wires, mesh, plating, grubby, dirty. I love this this paint scheme. Um, where it's not really bright. I mean, it is bright, gaudy yellow, but then he's really dirtied it up. Loads of oil and rust and battle damage and scars on it. And they just look really busy as well, in the right sort of way. The orcs just look like they're having a great time. Um, and the Lehman Russ one, again, he's, it's just got various details, like using the um, the uh, planks from the truck kit on there to add some detail to it. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Sebastian. Another Bane Blade. And uh, this one's rather nice. I love the muted paintwork on it. Very subtle. Just a good sort of uh, urban military look to it. And uh, it makes the orcs and the grots on it really stand out as well because the green sort of pops out from all this. Um, but, yeah, very, um, again, it's quite a quite a realistic look. And uh, he's just got a few various bits going on. He's he's patched up lots of you know repair bits of various things on the little platforms. They'll just find any bit they can get on it. The grots to sit on there. He's put like hunter killer rockets on there. All the boys now want to poke the reds at the top and see what's going on. Um, yeah, nice work. Hmm. I'll, I've got to get me a Bane Blade at some point. This is Paul Portelli. Thank you, Paul. Look at this thing. We have from Gary Hauser a looted rhino, which I think has been 3D printed. I think this whole thing has been 3D printed. You can tell from the sort of the lines on it. You can see where the print's been going along doing it. So he's printed off his own rhino, printed off his own death roller, the driver, um, he, you know, these are evil sons. They're mental. They love speed. So not only has he got the guns either side right by his ears, so he's going to be deaf as anything when these things are firing, but also he wants to sit, literally. Why, why sit inside and drive and look out the window? Just sit outside. You'll get the greater sensation of speed. Evil sons are mental. Um, so <laughs> that's cool. And I don't know where the grabbing claw's from. Don't recognise that bit. Looks like again, maybe from a third party kit, maybe from like a toy or something. I don't know, but but good stuff, good stuff. Uh, this is a cool one, Diego Slagart, and this is a cool truck conversion using a um, Rhino um, or parts of a Rhino at least. And I like that that that's a a clever, unusual way to use it um, as the sort of the the, the truck cab itself um, so he's just basically taken a rhino taken a truck kit and just mashed them together in a really really cool way and uh, yeah that it's got a cool look to it it just it, it, oh some of you guys can't have such, such clever ideas man because um, it's very easy to go for the obvious and you haven't you've, you've, you've used stuff in really quirky ways and I like this look this is just very cool very cool indeed. Thank you, Diego. Oh, and last up, the final one from Morton Sando. So, um, um, I when I first saw it, I thought Chimera. Um, 
but I don't know. I don't know if it's like a World War or like a modern day tank that's been looted. But it looks like a lot's going on here. Um, the turret is... Oh, is that from a Predator? I can see a heavy bolter there that has been turned into a big shooter. So I, I want to say that's a Predator turret. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's there's clearly some plastic hard work going on. Um, there's a Chimera scoop. I recognise that part. Uh, yeah, I think this there is a Chimera underneath this somewhere. And then he's gone. He's put this bit over the side. The wheels on there, so it's a really cool, like six wheeler. Um, yeah, crazy. Um, but they're very, very cool. Some serious battle damage. He's gone right through. Not just a few little bullet holes, like proper shell damage that's blown holes right through it. Um, it looks like it's got the big red button, like literally on the front of it, which wouldn't surprise me of orcs. Um, the old don't press stat rule that he used to have with the big red button. I think he's literally just mounted it on the front of the tank. Um, you got the skull with the crown there. Oh, well, I'm looking at that. All I can think is Triple H from WWE. Um, stick bomb launcher. Why not? He's just there's a fuck ton of them there. A whole cluster of them. Cool stuff, Morton. Cool stuff indeed. Um, so yeah there there you go guys there you go um wow uh the like i said the creativity on display is just astounding and uh you guys continue to inspire me and uh i hope you watching at home are, are just as inspired um but look guys if you want to become part of this amazing orc community and I, I genuinely mean that this is the best group on facebook by a country mile um, you, you need to follow the link down in the description, get yourself onto Facebook, join the 40k alt community and sh come and share and be inspired and share with just the, the friendliest, best, most creative gits that Facebook and YouTube have to offer. Um, I'll be doing more videos like this in the future, so expect more of these community showcase videos. I don't know what the next one will be. Um, but if you want to be involved with it and you want to have a chance of having your creations shown on the channel, um, then you need you know where you need to be, guys. You need to get over on that community site, and I'll be sharing a post at some point and giving everyone a chance to join in and share their creativity. And um, yeah, but uh, yeah, thank you, guys. In the meantime, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you don't miss my videos, so they don't get lost in amongst all the bigger channels. And, uh, yeah, get yourself over to the 40k orc community. But for now, guys, this is 6 Plus Stevo signing out.